Hello everyone, my name is Amir Adil. Today I share with you a story that I heard. The owner of the story said that it's a true story and that it happened to him personally. The events of the story took place in Egypt. The author of the story says, 25 years ago, a friend asked me to meet a Belgian man who needs a French translator. So I went to meet the Belgian man and he made sure that I spoke French fluently. And he said to me, after two days, friends of mine from Belgium and France will arrive, and we will go on a trip to the desert, and your task is to translate for me what the French say. Provided that the trip is very sacred, don't tell anyone what you will say along the trip. Don't ask any questions throughout the trip. Only do what I ask of you. And he offered me $20,000, and the amount was very large, so I agreed immediately. And he gave me $5,000 in advance and the rest of the amount after returning from the trip and confirmed that I would not talk to anyone about the trip, even the friend who brought you to me. So I agreed and said, don't worry, I'll come in two days. So I went to ready two days later after I packed my bag of clothes to the place where we agreed to meet. And I found with him a woman in her 50s and she was very strange. She was smoking heavily and her eyes were scary. There were two Egyptian men with the strange woman and it was clear from their words and clothes that they were from Upper Egypt. It was clear that they knew the Belgian man well. There were six four-wheel drive vehicles loaded with tent swine and camping supplies. We drove the cars from Hargada to the city of al Qusir on the Red Sea. Then we entered a road from al Qusir, heading to Qina through the eastern desert. The distance from al Qusir to Qina was about 200 kilometers. Before we reached Qina, the car stopped in the desert 50 kilometers away from a city called Qift. And this area was an agricultural city during the era of the pharaohs. And the Nile River extended to it and there was life in this city. The car zeded into the desert and walked for about an hour until the car stopped. The strange woman came down from the car and raised her hand in the air and was making strange movements with her hand in the air, as if she was talking to someone or giving signal to someone we don't see. The strange woman asked us to camp in this area, and the Egyptian workers came down and started setting up tents. The strange woman asked them to set up a tent for her 200 meters from our camps, and I didn't know the reason for this, but I couldn't ask for anything as the Belgian man asked me. And then I saw the workers put a wooden box in the far tent and left it and walked away. At night they were talking to each other and I was translating for them. I noticed that the Belgians spoke to each other in a local language in Belgium called Flemish. So that I didn't understand their words. But I knew some words from this language and I was able to learn some words such as the moon, the gift and the date. And then I knew that the gift meaning of sacrifice. I knew after that the Belgian man is the elder of these people and the strange woman is the guy. And they must do what she tell them and never go against her. There were two days left until the moon became a full moon. At night, a man came with a large black roll of cloth. And the strange woman was waiting for him, smoking heavily. And when he came, the strange woman took him to the faraway tent. And they stayed there for about an hour. In the morning, I saw the strange woman drawing a large square with a wooden stick on the sand. The Belgian man asked me to translate for the Egyptian workers to dig a large hole in this square and be four meters deep. Indeed, they dug the hole and the Belgian man gave them money and ordered the driver to take them to their town in Kenya. At night, the Belgian man, the strange woman, the guards and the workers were all sitting together drinking wine and laughing. And then they all slept. That night I couldn't sleep. So I went outside the tent to smoke a cigarette. Suddenly I heard the sound of children crying. The sound was coming from the faraway tent. I decided to go to see what the sound was. Whenever I approached the tent, the sound of children crying became louder and clearer. I had a small flashlight in my pocket, so I took it out and opened it to see what was in the tent. And here, 
I saw the most terrifying sight I had ever seen. I saw that the strange woman had drawn a six-pointed star on the ground with blood. On each end of the star, there was a skull of a small child. In the middle of the star, there was a head of a crying baby. And the baby was crying and all the skulls were crying with him at the same time. Here, I felt very afraid. I didn't know what to do. I can't escape. We are in the middle of the desert. And all the cars went to Kenna. I was afraid that they would find out that I saw what was in the tent and they would kill me. So I went back to the tents quietly and found them still sleeping. I decided to look normal in front of them so that they wouldn't notice that I had exposed them. The next morning the cars came loaded with large wooden boxes. The strange woman ordered the workers to put the boxes around the big hole and to dismantle all the tents and put them in the cars except for the faraway tent. After they put the tents in the cars, she asked all of us to ride the cars and go somewhere far from the hole. She ordered the driver to wait for her flashlight, so that we came back. We went away from their place and sat there waiting for her signal. While we were sitting, I was looking towards them. I could only see their flashlights moving in the dark, but I couldn't see what they were doing. It was a full moon night. Suddenly, I saw a huge black bird coming from the sky to the hole and suddenly it disappeared. In the middle of the night, we saw their lights, so we got into the cars and headed towards them. When we arrived, I was curious to know where the huge bird went, but I couldn't find it in the hole or anywhere. The strange woman ordered the workers to move the boxes to the cars. I helped them carry the boxes, and they were very heavy. The strange woman went to the faraway tent and raised her hand in the air and began to make movements with her hand in the air, then set the tent on fire and came back. While transporting the boxes, a small gold ring fell from the box, so I quickly took it and hid it in my pocket and no one noticed that. We all got in the cars and headed to the highway. The strange woman, the guards and the Egyptian workers were riding cars and the wooden boxes were with them. They headed toward the Skana. I was riding the car with the Belgian man. We headed toward the city of Al Qusair. Then we continued the route to Hargada. When we arrived in Hargada, the Belgian man asked me to go with him to his house. So we went to his house and there he thanked me and asked me to have lunch with him. But I refused and told him that I was tired and wanted to go to my house to rest. So he thanked me and gave me $30,000. And this amount was greater than the amount we agreed on. So I thanked him, said goodbye, and left. And when I got home, I relaxed a little and was thinking about the events I went through. I took a look at the ring that I had taken from them. Its shape was strange. The upper part of the ring was moving in a circular motion around itself. And engraved on it in writing in the hieroglyphic language. And it was painted with a picture of King Yemin. The symbol of fertility for the ancient Egyptians and a picture of the falcon of Horus was drawn on it. Two years later, I met an old man who had great experience about the secrets of the pharaohs, so I told him the story. He told me that the treasure they brought out is a cursed treasure that comes out only on the night of the full moon in a certain month. He also told me that the Jain guarded the cemetery and asked for the sacrifice to open it and the skulls of children were the sacrifice, and that the woman who was with them is a great witch who showed them to the treasure, and these foreigners will return to this place again. And this is the end of the story. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.